Uh, thank you very much, councillors, uh, and good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome. I declare the ordinary council meeting of the 20th of July uh, open as just after 6 p.m., 6.01 p.m. Uh, tonight is uh, Tuesday, the 20th of July, 2021. We acknowledge the Wadjuk people, the traditional custodians of the land, and pay our respect to elders both uh, past and present. Uh, can I ask, as I always do, uh, for everyone present this evening to please turn off electronic devices, uh, mobile phones particularly, iPads and tablets and the such for the duration of the meeting, as these uh, devices do interfere with our audio recording equipment. Tonight's council meeting is being recorded. A copy of the audio recording shall be available on the city's website uh, within 72 hours of the completion of tonight's meeting. The remainder of the disclaimer can be seen on the screen. Uh, at item two in attendances, uh, apologies, there have been none received and the full council is present tonight. Thank you, councillors. Approve leave of absence at item 2.2, there are none. Uh, disclosures of interest, uh, CEO will refer you to item three. Disclosures? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have no disclosures before me at this point of time. Uh, there Thank may you. be ones that have been handed to governance. Uh, I've got de declarations of impartiality. Uh, I'll read them. I've got them here in front of me. Uh, I'll read through them, if you like, just for the sake of expediency. And um, I'll ask these uh, members to uh, please read out these disclosures uh, when the items occur uh, during the course of business. Uh, the first declaration of impartiality is from Councillor Spencer Teo. It's uh, in relation to report EN 012 of 21 on page 104 of tonight's agenda. Uh, that uh, report being request 15 oblique 2019 for pre-qualified panel of suppliers for building construction and renewal works. The nature of the disclosure is that um, geared construction were engaged by the city to re renovate the Ross Point kindergarten whilst Councillor Spencer uh, Teo was a president on the committee at that time. Uh, and I imagine that that would be prior to her becoming a councillor and she had daily contact whilst project managing the work and subsequently engaged with their services to perform additional works outside the contract they had with the city. At completion, she gave them a testimonial for their website uh, marketing material. Uh, and the second disclosure I have is uh, councillor, and that is a impartiality um, disclosure. The second one is for uh, from Councillor Ponaturai. Thank you, Councillor. It's for CC 038 of 21 uh, regarding uh, page one of the confidential agenda in relation to expressions of interest uh, for portion 37 Baradar Boulevard, Willerton. The nature is I introduced Chunghua President Ting Chen to Council Management in October 2020 in brackets ex-CEO Arthur Chiron, Director Adams, when they were looking for a suitable block of land for a future Chunghua community centre in Canning Vale. And that is also uh, in Canning, sorry. You're right. Thank you, Councillor. And that is also an impartiality uh, declaration, disclosure. Uh, there are no further. At item four, announcements by the presiding member without discussion. Uh, there is none tonight. Reports of delegates. Does any um, a member wish to uh, provide a delegate report? No, we move on. Question time uh, for the public. Responses to previous questions are taken on notice. At item 6.1, uh, there are none. Question time for the public. I therefore open uh, public question time at 6.04 uh, p.m. The time set aside for public question time is 15 minutes, which may be extended if necessary. For recording purposes, please state your name and address and then proceed to ask your question. If an answer cannot be provided at tonight's meeting, the question will be taken on notice uh, and an answer will be provided at the next Ordinary Council meeting. In accordance with policy AD02, members of the public who have registered their interest, uh, their questions with the City's administration, shall be called upon in the order in which registrations were received. Written questions will precede verbal question. Uh, the City has received questions for tonight's meeting from Mr Peter Clayton. Is Peter Clayton here? Uh, Director Bow, apparently three written questions have been provided to you. Did you want to read them to the meeting? Yes, that's correct, Mr Mayor. Uh, Director Warren Bow. Thank you. Mr Mayor, the first question is why did the liquidity facility made available to the Willerton Basketball Association never crystallise into a West Australian Treasury Corporation fixed loan? 
the response is it was never intended for the liquidity facility used by the city to crystallise into a West Australian Treasury Corporation fixed loan. It was intended for any outstanding debt owed to the city by the Willett and Basketball Association via the use of the liquidity facility to crystallise into a loan between the parties, the parties being the City of Canning and the Willett and Basketball Association. This is subject to ongoing negotiations. The purpose of establishing a short-term lending facility or liquidity facility of $3 million was to assist the Willett Basketball Association and provide short-term funding for cash flow, flow shortages likely to be experienced by the Willett Basketball Association due to timing differences on receiving grant funding, both state and federal, and payments to their suppliers over the course of the Willett Stadium project. As at 30th of June 2020, Willerton Basketball Association had repaid almost all of the funds made available to them via the liquidity facility, leaving a small balance of $285,000. This is because the city kept using funds received from the Willerton Basketball Association during the construction of the stadium to service the amount drawn down by the liquidity facility over the duration of the project. It should be noted here that the amount drawn from the West Australian Treasury Corporation as multiple short-term loans at any point in time by the city never exceeded the $3 million as approved by the Council in April 2019. Thank you, Director Bo. Are there any further questions from the floor before we move on? Hang on there's two other questions. Oh, there's two. There's, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, question number two from Mr Clayton was, what proportion of the $2.51 million was used by the Willerton Basketball Association for the Willerton Basketball Association Stadium Expansion Project? The response is, the $2.51 million loan, or loan 244, as identified in the 2019-2020 annual budget of the City of Canning was used by the City to provide short-term funding to the Willerton Basketball Association to address cash flow shortages during the Willerton Stadium project. And the third question, Mr Mayor, what was the $2.51 million raised, used for? Um, the response is as per question two. Uh, thank you. Any further questions from the floor before we move on? There's a lady at the back. Mrs Aldridge, you had your hand up. I'll ask you to come to the microphone and just start, state your name and address, please, and then uh, go right ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr Mayor, CEO Keynes, Councillors, City of Canning Officers and members of the public. Um, my name is Marnie Aldridge and I live at Minota Avenue, Shelley. Um, my first question, um, I was greatly concerned to hear at the budget meeting that the money has been spent on private detectives. Has at any time private detectives been engaged by the city to investigate anyone on council? Uh, CEO, can I refer that to you in the first instance? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm not sure which budget meeting you're referring to. There's no, been no budget discussion or budget meeting that referred to anything involving a private detective. OK, sorry, to clarify then, what was the comment about there was a line in the budget that referred to private detectives? Um, look, Mrs Aldridge, you're the one asking the question. I, I can't clarify what Did your you question wanna, is. So, you I'm sorry, I think like, Councillor Barry may have talked Aldridge. about... No, I'm sorry, this is just still relating to the first uh -huh. question. It was, I thought... Councillor Barry had mentioned something about private detectives being undertaken by the City of Canning and there was an expense If listed. these are your own questions, you should be able to clarify what your question is unless these are But I'm being told there wasn't questions. private detectives. Sorry? I was told there wasn't private detectives just then. Who told own. you there was a private detective? Uh, uh, CEO Kane just said there. No, I said I, I can't tell you about a private detective. There's nothing discussed about private detectives during a budget discussion. Okay, if so your first question cares, tonight said during the budget private discussion. detectives actually discussed at any time, maybe not a budget review. Are we splitting hairs about the budget part of that question or the private detectives part of that question? We're not splitting hairs at all and I'd ask you to be respectful to uh, Council when you address it. We're not splitting hairs. You mentioned the budget, Mrs Aldridge. We didn't mention it. You okay. did. So can I clarify the that first was your question? question? Were private detectives actually spent or the money spent on private detectives? CEO? Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I'm not sure what you're referring to in terms of private detectives. Okay. Um, there are investigations an entity might conduct during the course of the year. Uh, the use of, uh, to quote, private detectives is, is uh, something that I wouldn't use in uh, common parlance. 
the city during the course of the year would undertake a number of investigations of its own recourse. I'm, I'm not aware of engaging specifically a detective to do any, any actions on behalf of the city. Okay. Your second question, Mrs Aldridge. Okay. Um, with the upcoming Standing Up Canning program that's on next Monday morning for women who wish to stand up in council, which I fully support women going for council, doesn't networking imply that the potential candidate will gain some benefit from knowing sitting councillors, which is the direct contrary to the code of conduct which states that a councillor should not use their position to advantage an individual? Director. CEO, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the event that's being done is to sponsor uh, and encourage women to become involved in local government, which is a core uh, objective of the association. It doesn't seek to promote any individual or provide any advantage to any existing councillor. But to clarify, but aren't the actual meeting and networking You've discussing... You've asked your question, Mrs. Aldridge. This will be your third and final question. Okay. so. I can appreciate it's difficult to find a time that suits everyone, but a 10am meeting on a Monday certainly disadvantages working women. Do you think it's fair that some will gain the benefit of networking while others won't have the same opportunity benefit as networking with councillors? I'd only make the point. It's actually an Australian local government women's association will of women WA event. Tonight You're interrupting me while I'm speaking. I'm trying to provide you with a response. The event's actually being hosted here at the City of Canning, but the, but the event's actually being run statewide by the Australian uh, local Government Women's Association of Western Australia. We were just asked if we would provide uh, a function room to host it. Uh, that's all we're doing. So are you coming? Are the councillors, the women councillors coming? All, counts, all the councillors, women councillors are all coming. And male so councillors? Everyone coming? You've, Oh, I'm just your, really your reason, you've, you've already asked your three questions. I'm trying to give you a, an answer. It's not, not a, a, I'm not planning to argue or have a dialogue with you about it. You asked a question about the event and I've provided you with an answer. Uh, no, so you I don't, don't think it's beneficial for networking that some people can attend and some can't? You asked the question and I told you that the event's actually been hosted here in our room, but it's actually not our, our event per se. It's actually been run by another organisation. I'm fully supportive of it. Uh, mm. Each of our uh, women councillors, Councillor Sabiri, Councillor Ponatu, and Councillor uh, Spencer Teo will be in attendance, uh, as are a number of other uh, women councillors from other councils, and also Hannah uh, Beasley, the uh, member for Victoria Park, will be in attendance to talk about their experience uh, in running campaigns and being on council. We're doing everything we can mm. to try to support women in local government, and I guess in, uh, in uh, government per se, in leadership roles. And I think that we should all be supporting a greater diversity here in the council. And you would know, uh, you can see mm. out of 11 councillors, only three of them are women. I'd like to think that all of us would be supportive of increasing that. No matter what time we have, uh, it will be not suitable to some people. If we held it in the early evening, um, as somebody that had four kids, we would then get people saying that is a despicable time in the early evening when young families are feeding and bathing and children. That's a terrible time to be holding it then. This is always intended to be a morning tea and I understand too that all the information provided on the day will be uh, also available uh, online and it's open to anyone to attend. Sure, but there's still people who can't attend, don't get the same benefit. There's basically. always going to be people that can't attend, Mr. I know, Aldridge, but at the same they? point, you've got people I'm not people having an argument there. with you about it. You've asked your question, I've provided an answer. Thank you for coming okay. along. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? Oh, Mr. Aldridge. Mr. Aldridge, step forward. Uh, Richard Aldridge, 5 Minota Avenue in Shelley. Um, sorry, I've got about a one minute pre ramble. Um, Last OCM, Mayor Hall directly asked for clarification from Director Kane how the city would deal with the WBA loan if the motion did not pass with absolute majority. Director Kane gave his professional advice that if the Council did not support the motion, the WA, uh, WBA would effectively owe us eight years of the outstanding balance of $200,000 and we would just give them a letter of demand for that $200,000. This is the only means of which we can deal with this. We cannot enter special trading terms, just like we can't with ratepayers and any other debtors. Later, the Mayor Hall, after hearing this clear professional advice from Director Kane last month, as spokesman of this council, stated, uh, in complete contradiction to um, CEO Kane's professional advice to the Canning Gazette, it now falls on the city staff to agree to the terms of the WBA to repay the sum, whether immediately or over time. Um, I'd just like to know which one of you was right. 
the, I'll refer that to the CEO. CEO Kane. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the obligation is on the Willerton Basketball Association to repay the amount of uh, monies they owe the city. The city, after the council's uh, decision, has communicated that to the WBA, and we're awaiting a formal response to them. In accordance with the city's policy on short-term debtors, if the city, uh, or when the city eventually receives a response, the Bulletin Basketball Association is open to deal with this a number of ways. One which is they could simply repay the funds, they could seek, seek to draw down a, a loan facility from a private entity, or enter, enter some form of other, other payment structure. The city, while we await the response back from the Willerton Basketball Association, has not issued a letter of demand at this point in time. That would be dealt with in accordance with the specific policy we have on short-term debt. So we are waiting a response back from the Willerton Basketball Association in terms of how they'll manage the amount of money they owe the city. Thank you. Mr Aldridge, your second question. Um, so just to clarify, oh, this can be question two. So to, so to date, no letter of demand has been sent. Mr Aldridge, a second question, CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. As I've said, after the council decision, a copy of the council decision was communicated to the Bulletin of Vascal Association. That matter was going to be put to the board. At this stage, we have not had a formal response back from the board. Your final question, Mr Aldridge. Um, just to clarify that um, the $2.51 million in the annual budget um, for loan 244, um, that was 100% taken up just by the 2.5 million, 100% of that was taken up by the uh, Willowden Basketball Association, is that correct? CEO, are you able to provide an initial response to that? Director Bo. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the $2.51 million loan, or loan 244, as identified in the 2019-2020 budget, was used by the city to provide short-term funding to the WBA, Willerton Basketball Association, to address cash flow shortages during the Willerton Stadium project. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Mr Aldridge. Thank you. Any further questions before we move on? Thank you. I'll close uh, public question time now. The time, by my recollection, uh, recollection is, uh, uh, say, 6.18 uh, p.m., Thank you. We we'll move on to confirmation of minutes. Uh, the recommendation is that the, ordin uh, the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on the 15th of June 2021 and also the special council meeting held on Thursday the 24th of June 2021 be confirmed as circulated. The recommendation is on page three of the agenda. Can I have a mover please? Thank you, Councillor Bain and a seconder. Councillor Sweeney, thank you. Councillors will put the matter to the vote. The motion to confirm the OCM and SCM minutes has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Uh, thank you, councillors. We move to uh, item eight on tonight's agenda, receiving of petitions, presentations and deputations. At item 8.1, petitions, there are none. 8.2, presentations, there are none this evening. At item 8.3, which are deputations. Oh, a deputation from Mr Richard Aldridge uh, regarding loans to the Willerton Basketball Association and the potential use of loan 244. Mr Aldridge, please step forward and make your deputation. Ten minutes. You have up to 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, firstly, I'd like to stress that everything I say tonight is just my opinion. Um, I don't believe the Willard and Basketball Association itself has done anything wrong or improper, and at worst they agreed to a loan facility much bigger than they knew they would need. Mr Aldridge, just for the uh, sake of it, just to assist you, I understand that you're doing a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if there is anything up there that you may not have uh, interpreted correctly or is misleading, I'll just ask uh, Director Bo to provide some clarity for you before we move on. Otherwise, at the end of it, we'll lose some clarity. But please go ahead. I won't interrupt you again. Line 244. I, I do, however, believe the city should um, provide absolute clarity about this loan. Um, it appears to me at least to be set up not just for the benefit of the Willard and Basketball Association, but for other uses. Um, the first anomaly that I think is anomaly anyway is that um, the Willard and Basketball Association didn't come to the council for the loan. Um, the city went to the Willard and Basketball Association and offered it. We can't see that, uh, Mr Aldridge. Can you tell me who that email is to and who's it from? Because we can't read it from here. 
Um, I can't read it with my glasses on, one second. You don't have a hard copy in front of you? Um, no, I don't. It says, uh, Dear Richard, thanks for the answer to your question. Um, the City of Council offered the facility to the WAB board, uh, decided to accept this. Um, I, no, I can't read it, I'm sorry. Um, but basically it's from the, the chairman of the Willowden Basketball Association from back in 2019, when I asked who approached who. Uh, just, just for the um, sake of the record, only because this is an official record of this meeting, I'm being told that's not who it's from. Can I, Director Buck? Yeah, that's correct, Mr Mayor. The email uh, as presented in Mr Aldridge's presentation is from the Willowden Basketball Association Chief Executive, Mr Mark Winnett. Okay, my apologies, not the chairman, it's the chief executive officer of the Willard and Basketball Association. Either way, it comes down to the fact that the, um, as far as he was concerned, the loan um, was offered to them by the um, City of Canning officers and they didn't approach the city. Um, this I find strange and to my knowledge, looking at the minutes, it wasn't done at the request of a council. The second thing that I found strange was that uh, the 3rd of October meeting identified a shortfall of 650,000 um, and the, the city was fully cognizant that the WBA did not need up to $3 million um, and they offered them considerably more money than they needed. Just on, on that, um, Director. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Do Mayor. Do we offer them more money than was needed? Um, Mr. Mayor, those estimates were from October 2018, uh, some six months before Council considered the true quantum of its uh, funding through the liquidity facility. There was a significant amount of value engineering being undertaken with the design to reduce the overall project cost. Council finalised its financial arrangements six months later in April 2019 and WA, WBA confirmed they had sufficient project funding to enable the stadium project to commence soon after. There was no shortfall in capital funding for the project upon commencement. The WBA did not need $2.42 million of capital funding from the city to avoid insolvency. There was a cash flow issue for the WBA over the duration of the project and that is what the $3 million was resolved by Council to address. Thank you, Mr Bow. Um, in the 4th of April 2019 Special Council Minutes, uh, background point one, um, it states that the October 2018 uh, Special Council Meeting EN 031-18 Resolved to assist the WBA for a loan up to $3 million over 10 years in addition to $2.2 million um, as a debenture loan um, grant, um, but I can't find it in the minutes. I can't find any referral to that $3 million. Um, the October 2018 motion did mention a potential operating deficit of $2.5 million. Um, but this was only if the WA, WBA did not get the $2.2 million dementia loan grant. Um, I did try to do FOI searches to get a better understanding of why the city um, did this and the city of Canning um, came back to me and said they can't fill out my FOI because they have no records of any meetings prior to that date which I also found a bit strange. Um, the, I'll go back one. The, loan, the loans, I believe, were offered um, sort of as a package. I talked to a source within the WBA and um, he made it apparent that the loans were offered as a package deal. Um, the same source expressed that some of the committee members of the WBA at the time were concerned by the size of the facility but they agreed to it because when they realised they wouldn't have to take it all up and would only have to pay interest on the portion they had taken up. During the actual meeting, and it's well worth going back and having a listen to this special council meeting, um, one of the councillors attempted to amend the motion to restrict the loan just to the use of the WBA and it appears that he was um, barraged with a um, points of order So I think there's some inconsistencies that need to be clarified. It would be nice if the um, administration could 
give all the ins and outs from that loan fund um, just for peace of mind of ratepayers like myself. Um, I, I don't understand where the 2.51 was needed. Um, it seems to be a lot larger than the amount that the WA grant was for anyway. We might be able to provide a little bit of peace of mind for thank you. through Director Bo. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just in, in response to Mr Aldridge's assertions that he was unable to locate the reference to the $3 million in the minutes, <laughs> it's certainly within uh, the resolution that was passed by Council at the 4th April 2019 meeting that the City would um, use the liquidity facility for uh, up to the value of $3 million to assist the WBA in their cash flow issues. It appears that Mr Aldridge is confused between the direct grant that was provided to the WBA by the city and the resolution by council to fund through the use of the West Australian Treasury Corporation liquidity facility to assist in the, the Willett and Basketball Association's cash flow issues over the duration of the project. Ultimately, um, there was $288,000 outstanding uh, from the WBA after they had repaid over the duration of the project the proceeds of the city's use of that liquidity facility. Um, there is significant paperwork and records as to how the city provided funds via its liquidity facility to assist the WBA to address the cash flow shortages during the Willerton Stadium project. And as I mentioned before, the $2.51 million loan, or loan 244 as identified in the 2019-2020 budget, was used by the city to provide the short-term funding to the WBA. In, in relation to Mr Aldridge's assertions regarding his freedom of information application, all freedom of information applications are considered in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. As Mr Aldridge is aware, his dispute of the outcome of the city's review of his application was upheld by the Information Commissioner. Thank you, Mr Aldridge. Continue. Thank you, Mr Bow. Um, coincidentally, just two weeks before the WBA loan on the, on the 19th of March, the Council was asked to approve a funding change um, for the source of $990,000 from the Mallard Way properties from trust fund to loan funds. This, was, this change was made only months after the properties had been purchased. Motion CC041-18 was to purchase Mallard Way properties using trust funds from a TPS trust fund um, from a different uh, TPS area. This was questioned by Council and the City sought legal opinion. The opinion was that the City could do this as long as the TPS was repaid with interest. Um, unfortunately, such a loan would breach the trustees' fiducial duties. Trustees can only take actions that are at the benefit of the beneficiaries. A trustee transferring money out of the trust account for an unsecured loan without interest would be in breach of their fiducial duties as a trustee and could be struck off. Again, I've done extensive research, uh, FOI searches, and again, yes, I have gone through the Information Commissioner, and yes, I've had no joy uh, extracting information from the city regarding these purchases of these properties. However, the purchases were made, the Mallard properties were bought, and the problem I have with that is it, um, that the FOI came back, the city denied using the trust funds. Um, and yet I can't see anywhere in the budget where that money was budgeted for that property purchase. So if the property purchases weren't in the budget, where did the city get the money from? One of, one of the choices for funding a property purchase in the city centre, of course, is the WATC Liquidity Facility for Capital Works City Centre which later became Loan 244. Unfortunately, the borrowing of money from the WATC for a speculative property purchase without council approval is also extremely problematic. The city will require absolute majority of council approval before the deal to purchase the land and the property had already been purchased. Um, I'm not completely convinced it is coincidence that two weeks later, the Loan 244 was put up to council by administration to a council who desperately wanted the West Australian Bas the, sorry, the Willerton Basketball Association Stadium pro um, project to be advanced. I also don't think it's completely coincidence that the loan was structured in such a way that any money taken up by the Willerton Basketball Association um, could be used by the administration without the need to coming back to council for spending approval. 
Um, basically, I'm not saying anything that has happened. I don't know what has happened. But it would be nice if the city could make all the transactions out of loan 244 um, completely transparent, maybe have a third party look at them and make them public. Um, also, with all transactions surrounding the $990,000 um, Mallard Way properties, I believe they should be made transparent um, and examined by a third party. I mean, earlier this year, the Mayor called for a CCC investigation over an allegation that a single unnamed councillor phoned a CEO candidate to say, hey, you didn't get the job, you were underprepared. If that deserves a CCC investigation, surely the least this council can do now is to examine if there's any anomalies um, on loan 244. Thank you very much for your time, Council. Thank you. The second deputation of this evening has been approved for Dr Ting Chin, uh, President of the Chung Wah Association, regarding confidential item CC038 of uh, 21, the report uh, being expression of interest, portion of 37 Burrandar Boulevard in Willerton, uh, lot 102. Mr Chen, uh, welcome to the meeting. Thank you for coming. Uh, the microphone should be on. I think staff will turn that on for you now. Uh, and you have up to 10 minutes, please, to make your deputation. Just for the sake of the record, I'll just ask you just to uh, state your name. Dear uh, Mayor Patrick Hall, Councillors, CEO, Mr Stephen King, staff of City of Kenny, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am the president of the Zhonghua Association. I appreciate that City of Kenny gave me an uh, opportunity to present at the council meeting. On December 2020, Zhonghua's association received commitments from both Liberal and Labour Party for $5 million to build a community centre in the south of River. It was a bipartisan commitment. We would like to spend the funding at the city of Canning and build a community centre here. Why will we select city of Canning? City of Kenny is one of the most cultural diversified cities in our country. Over 50% of the residents were born overseas. Kenny is also one of the cities that have the most Chinese live, living in Australia. The number is going up every year. Zhonghua Association is the oldest ethnic association in WA, established in 1909 and officially registered on 12 July 1910. Our vision is through the promotion of harmony, preserving our heritage and practicing humanity. We have provided Chinese community language education since 19. 75 and now totally over a thousand students were registered in 2021 at five campuses across in Perth. We are providing home care, uh, home care services to over 800 aged people and NDIS clients over 30 countries, including China, Southeast Asian countries. Chile, Indian, and others. Zhonghua Community and Aged Care is using Wellington Sports Center to provide services to aged people in the community. The future Zhonghua Community Center at Berenda Brewer, Wellington, will work connected to the community in the local areas, areas. Next to the beautiful park, library and shopping center. We will keep the trees there and we would like to build a Chinese garden next to the community center. The building will be eco ecologically friendly. As there is a bus stop nearby, we, especially the aged people, will use the public transport to come to the center. More important, the community center will not be used, will not be used only for Chinese and a Zhonghua Association, but also other communities to celebrate cultural diversity and build a social cohesion at City of Kenny. We will provide multicultural child care facility, after school care, 
with ethnic cultural education, arts, cultural training, and especially aged care as well. Finally, we will pay the land at the market price if land is put on the market for EOI. Thank you very much again, and looking forward to having your support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming along, uh, Doctor. Just so you know, the matter will be discussed much later in the meeting. It's yep. actually going to be discussed as a confidential item, yep. so you won't be able to stay in the room and hear the deliberation of Council on the night, but, uh, okay. but obviously uh, later on the evening, uh, regardless of the outcome, we will be uh, reading that publicly, and that will be available uh, to you tomorrow. I think the audio will be available uh, then or shortly, shortly after that. Okay. But again, thank you for coming along. Thank you very much. Councillors, at item uh, 9 tonight, uh, applications for leave of absence, uh, there are none. At item 10, uh, questions by members of which due notice has been given, uh, there are none. At item 11, uh, items brought forward for the convenience of those in the public. Um, for the um, sake of the, uh, the meeting, uh, I'll be bringing forward CD 020 of 21, and that's the adoption of the local, uh, the LDP for 31 uh, Webb Street there in Ross Moyne. We've got a number of interested parties in the, uh, in the audience, so we'll bring that matter forward. Uh, and at item 12, reports of committee meetings, uh, there are none this evening. So without any further ado, we will uh, launch into the first item on tonight's uh, agenda, which is on, uh, let me see, I'll just get to the page, councillors, thank you. It's CD 020 of 21, the title being Adoption of Local Development Plan for 31 Webb Street, in brackets, lot 1818, close brackets, Ross Moyne, uh, known as Ross Moyne Waters. Director Graham Bride is the responsible officer for the uh, item. The recommendation is on page 77 of the agenda and it is on the screen. Can I have a mover, please, for the item of uh, Councillor Spencer Teo uh, as the uh, mover and Councillor Kunza as the seconder? Councillor Spencer Teo. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> Sorry. Firstly, um, I'd like to commend staff for bringing this to us um, in this format. Um, I really think that an LDP um, has worked in the favour of this council and also in the community in knowing what is being proposed on this site, even if stage three, some uh, four to six years down the track. While I appreciate this application is going to a JDAP committee for the development application decision, this gives us the opportunity to set the framework and parameters around the development now. Although the parameters may not meet everybody's expectations, there is no denying and I'd really like to acknowledge and thank the developers for their willingness to listen and acknowledge um, and also to, you know, to thank them, um, sorry, for their willingness to address the concerns of the residents um, who live along Bull Creek Drive. The setbacks are incredibly generous. Um, they've not only demonstrated a real desire to address the concerns whilst not only complying with the laws and town planning schemes um, of the state and this council, but they've gone um, far and beyond the minimum requirements. Although I'm fully aware that more detail will come at the development application stage, um, I would like to take this opportunity to raise a small amendment just to solidify the verbal commitment made by Adventist Care in that established trees will be placed along Bull Creek Drive. So if I could get everyone to maybe have a look at that amendment. Is that the amendment um, you're reading it yourself, Councillor Spencer Teo? Is that the amendment that you're proposing? You're happy with what's on the screen? Yes. Need a seconder for the amendment? Councillor Kunza, right. Councillor Kunza uh, is the seconder uh, for your amendment. Uh, Councillor Spencer Teo, did you want to speak to your amendment? Sure. Um, so the amendment is um, basically an amendment to one of the attachments, which is the conditions um, on the development, and that is to modify requirement three of the communal open space and landscaping, point three, uh, which reads, <coughs> excuse me, a four metre landscape and a tree edge setback line A and Northern Laundry Bot to Bull Creek Road shall be provided by the landowner and developer with established and mature trees to the satisfaction of the city. 
So basically my rationale behind that is to ensure that uh, seedlings aren't going to be planted along there and that um, the expense will be borne by the developers to ensure that mature trees are um, planted straight away to create an immediate privacy buffer um, for the residents along Bull Creek Drive. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is to solidify the verbal commitment that, commitment that was given last week and also um, that was said to us and the residents by the developers. Um, this amendment will ensure that the mature vegetation is planted um, and this will also mean that the developer will need to show this on their detailed landscaping plans at JDAP um, and it will, sh it will ensure that it forms part of the approval and compliance process further down the track. Um, so in closing, I ask my fellow councillors to please support this amendment um, as it will provide assurance and some comfort to those residents who have expressed concerns regarding privacy. Thank you. Councillor Kunza, do you want to speak to the amendment? Uh, yes, Mr Mayor. Look, I speak in favour of the amendment. Um, uh, whilst the developer has uh, indicated that this would be um, how they would go about the the development. Um, the fact of the matter is that this won't happen for a number of years, stage three, and anything affecting Bull Creek Road. And um, a number of us might not be here. And I guess that this actually makes sure that the council decision at the time in passing, in endorsing the LDP, if that's what we do, um, our indication was that to, because one of the major concerns of neighbouring residents is that we're actually um, in our resolution enshrining the fact that there needs to be mature vegetation um, as has been discussed with us verbally um, and that it needs to be mature so that once stage three uh, proceeds um, there's that privacy um, or the, the protection of the vegetation and that you're not having to wait for many years if the trees aren't that um, mature. So I think it's a, um, a proper way to go. Okay. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask a question, actually, of uh, Director Bride. Director Bride, uh, uh, I understand you're aware of the amendment. Uh, have you got any? Are there any objections from staff? I mean, is this uh, is this an, an issue in relation to uh, the officer's recommendation? Do you see any inadvertent consequences of this? Or? Uh, yeah, three, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no staff support the amendment. Um, certainly, it was a commitment made by the uh, developer. Um, as pointed out, the development application will come um, at a later stage, possibly four to six years away. But in terms of the decision-making process, um, the JDAP, if they're the decision makers, would have to give due regard to that particular clause. And it provides a very clear intent that the vegetation should be mature. Um, and those detailed landscape plans should identify that level of vegetation. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to speak further on it. Does anyone want to speak against the amendment before we put it in the boat? Oh, Councillor Porter, you'd like to speak? Just through you, Mr. Mayor, I had a question. So uh, when it talks in relation to with established and mature trees, does that mean that they need to plant the trees now or are they going to be planting mature or established Director trees? Bright. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the intention would be that they would um, source appropriately sized mature vegetation off-site and bring it in so early on as part of the completed stage of that development you have an immediate visual or immediate visual buffer created anyone else councillor barry thank you thank you mr mayor <clears throat> and just in relation to what councillor porter was saying so am i to understand what director bride said that we are just basically reinforcing a position that's held by the developer in relation to these trees? I think it's just putting it in writing, uh, Director. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, as, as the existing LDP talked about a landscape, detailed landscape plan to be provided at the development application stage, this gives a little bit more context and detail and direction to the developer and also the JDAP that the expectation by the Council is for mature trees to be planted immediately as part of the completed development. Thank you, Councillor Barry. And that's pre that coming back to council or anything like that. So if this amendment goes on, the, for argument's sake, the trees will be planted within, say, two months or something. Is that correct? Director? Uh, the usual requirement is the vegetation should be in prior to the occupancy of the building. So once the building is completed, 
the expectation is you can't occupy that building until the vegetation the landscaping is in place. And did you say then that will happen in three to six, or did someone say three to six years? Director Bright. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly it's up to the applicant's uh, time frame in terms of when they wish to proceed, but what they have identified at the moment is this particular stage, stage three, is around four to six years away in their, in their site planning. Councillor Barry. So what, 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 are, what do we call mature trees? I mean, is this a tree that's five metres tall, that's a replant from somewhere else, or is it a 100 litre tree or, or what? Director. Uh, through Mr Mayor, that, that's why the um, reference is to the satisfaction of the city, um, rather than you know, identify a particular... Point of order, Mr Mayor. This is a, a, an amendment put by Councillor Spencer Tower, not mm -hmm. by the, um, the Director Bride. It's not up to Director Bride to substantiate and explain the amendment. It's up to Spencer Tower. No, uh, it's not. Yes, fact, it is. Well, heck, I'm not going to argue with you. So, That's Director, Councillor Barry has asked a question through the Chair. He's asked a question in relation to uh, the, the process and uh, the director is providing a, a technical basis uh, on what, how will we judge what a mature tree is. So, and as it actually says here, to the satisfaction of the city and not to the satisfaction of Councillor Spencer Teo, I, th I do think Councillor Holland, it's appropriate that the city's director actually uh, clarifies what that actually means. So, well, we'll agree to disagree on the strongest terms. We'll have to terms. agree to this disagree. Is the, this yeah. is not the director's or any director's motion I've already or ruled. amendment. Yeah, thank you. We'll allow, allow him to continue. Just to provide that clarification, Director, to Councillor Barry. Yeah, so that's the reason the the, re the relevance to the mature or to the satisfaction of the city is at the time the detailed landscape plans are lodged as part of the application, we would have to be satisfied or the city would have to be satisfied that the, the height and breadth and age of the trees is appropriate to ensure there's a visual screen from day one. Thank you. Councillor Barry, anything further? So I suppose essentially um, the uh, amendment is surplus because we're already going to do that anyway, is that correct? Director. Uh, through Mr Mayor, the, the, amend the existing LDP, as I said, already had reference to detailed landscaping plans being provided at the development application stage. This is an add-on to say, in relation to that landscaping, it should be mature, so that it is adding a bit more context, a bit more direction than the existing part of the LDP. Thank you. Anyone else before we put the matter to the vote on the amendment? Uh, thanks, councillors. Uh, Councillor Spencer, no one spoke against it. There are a number of questions from councillors uh, seeking clarification, but there's no one spoke against it. Councillors, the amendment uh, is on the screen. It's been uh, put by Councillor Spencer Teo, <coughs> seconded by Councillor Kunza. Uh, we'll put the matter to the vote. And this is just in relation to the amendment on the screen. <coughs> Amendment to CD-020-21 has been carried. Ten in favour, one against, with Councillor Barry voting against. Uh, thank you, councillors. The amendment now becomes the uh, part of the substantive um, uh, motion, uh, recommendation. Uh, we had uh, Councillor Spencer Teo had actually moved that motion, seconded by Councillor Kunza. Councillor Spencer Teo has actually spoken to the motion. Councillor Kunza spoke to the amendment, but not to the motion. So as a seconder, I will now uh, provide the opportunity for Councillor uh, Kunza to speak to the, uh, to the recommendation. Councillor Kunza. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I speak in favour of the amended substantive motion. Um, the facts are that the proposal outlined in the local development plan uh, meets the state planning controls and our town planning scheme. I, look, I sympathise with the local residents who raise their concerns, more specifically uh, those living across the road who worry about the three-storey development. But I and I want to commend those residents who got involved in the process and raised their views, especially um, Annika, Dennis and Howard, who presented last week. Um, but given the proposed, what's proposed in the LDP is allowable under the relevant planning framework, um, there's no permissible action that Council can take other than to approve uh, what's been proposed by Adventist Residential Care. Um, if we overreach here tonight, uh, that is asked for steps that aren't within the remit of the planning framework, then we open ourselves to going to the State Administrative Tribunal, where the City would incur the costs and have no relevant planning argument to stand on. 
Even our planning staff would have to conflict themselves out of the process, as is their expert opinion that the LDP in its current form is appropriate. Uh, with no height limits in place, the proponent could propose to build towers right across this site to maximise maximize the number of seniors' accommodation, but they've not done that. Advent Adventist Residential Care has proposed a design that focuses the larger build towards the southern side of the lot next to Leach Highway whilst minimising the build towards the north or northern side of the lot. So I'd like to take this opportunity to commend CEO Gary Blagden and his team at Adventist Residential Care for taking this approach to achieve your renewal aims whilst not overly seeking to impact the local community. With the limited number of retirement villages in our community, there are limited opportunities for local residents who wish to downsize and stay in the area. And we've seen with Australis Stage 1, a number of residents uh, did take that opportunity to move in there. So the landscape plan in Triad should provide the protection that nearby residents are seeking. And by ensuring the vegetation is mature, um, there shouldn't be a large delay in providing this protection. And Councillor Spencer Tiro's um, amendment tonight has further solidified that. Um, in coming years, the city um, is actually looking at creating entry statements at various locations across Canning, areas where the vegeta vegetation is striking and you, knew, know what you, you know you've come into Canning. Um, the tree edge along Bull Creek Road will complement the work that the city will be doing in coming years to improve the entry into Ross Spine along Webb Street. And I do hope the ultimate result is positive and hope that the negative concerns that residents have at the moment don't come into fruition. Thank you, councillors. Anyone wish to speak against the matter? Uh, anyone else wish to speak before we put the matter to the vote? Thank you, councillors. Uh, we'll put the matter to the vote. Substantive motion as amended, CD-020-21 has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Uh, thank you very much, councillors. We move on to um, item 13.1, uh, the uh, report, the responsible officer is our CEO, Mr Stephen Kane. The report is OC004 of 21. The report title is Western Australian Local Government Association, in brackets, Walga, 2021 Annual General Meeting, City of Canning Voting Delegates. The officer's recommendation is uh, on the screen and is also on page four of tonight's agenda. Can I have a mover for that item, please? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, seconder. Councillor Spencer Teo, thank you. <coughs> Deputy Mayor, have you got anything you'd like to add? I don't have anything to add. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Spencer, TO, nothing to add? Nothing to add. Thank you. Councillors, uh, we might uh, put the matter to the vote. Motion OC 004 21 has been carried unanimously. 11 in favour. Uh, thank you. We move to item 13.2, the responsible officer being uh, Director Warren Bow, the Director of Canning Corporate and Commercial. The item is CC 036 of 21, the title of that report being New Lease for Willetton Tennis Club Incorporated, uh, Burrandar Park. The officer's recommendation is on screen and also appears on page 9 of tonight's agenda. Can I have a mover for that item? Thank you, Councillor Ponoturoi and Councillor Hollander, Holland as a seconder. Councillor Ponoturoi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm happy to see that uh, Willerton Tennis Club, um, we have a formal um, lease agreement will be signed. And I know at the last meeting we had some discussion about why not netball and why tennis club. Uh, but I've actually spoken to the netball, netball club, the captain, and uh, they use only very minimum hours and the toilets, and they're happy to be uh, paying some of the fees, part of the cleaning, and the tennis club um, to have the lease. And um, they use a majority of the time and I happened to bump to the tennis club uh, president too, Jay, and uh, I think they do a fantastic job and uh, happy to see that and I hope everybody support this item. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ponoturo. Councillor Holland? Councillor Holland? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr. Miss? Okay. Um, yes, I'd like to I speak in favour of this um, motion. I think that the Lawn Tennis Club at, the, at Willerton is a great um, facility. It's been a great um, community facility for quite a few years and they need to be substantiated with a 5 plus 5 lease. 
I think it's um, quite ridiculous that if we did not pass this at all, they're a great community group. They're not asking for money, they're just asking for a lease. I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak against the matter before we put it to the vote? Councillor says put the matter to the vote. Thank you. Motion CC-036-21 has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Thank you. We move to item CC037 of 21, the item being monthly financial report for June 2021. Again, uh, Director Warren Bow is a responsible officer. The recommendation is on page 17 of tonight's agenda uh, and is also on screen. A mover, please, from the floor. Mover for that item. Thank you, Councillor Ponaturo. Seconder. Councillor Bain, thank you. Councillor Ponaturo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, I'm just happy to see the report as of 30th of June. And uh, I'm hoping to see the new report for the July month report. So that probably should come from August, the, the one page summary report against the the rating statement, at least model uh, rating statement Thank option you. two, um, because they, we weren't able to report it yet because this is only the budget as of 30th of June. So that should make us a bit more comfortable. Uh, I'm happy to work with the management team on that. And on that note, I'm happy to move this um, item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bain, have you got anything to add? Uh, nothing further. Thank you, Ms. May, other than I support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Barry? Yes, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Just one question. Um, this afternoon, um, <clears throat> I was reading uh, the inquiry into the um, uh, Dowron Council. Which council? Dowron. Dowron, okay. Dowron. I haven't seen that. You haven't? No, was it recent? No, well, no, no, it wasn't recent, but I mean, it's the question. Um, yeah, go ahead. Which, which items in, within the, um, the city's warrant listings? Um, relate to credit card transactions of the city officers who are granted? That's just my first question. Uh, Director Bo, are you able to answer that? Or are you... I'm happy to take that question on notice, Mr Mayor. Take that on notice. Well, I suppose so, the, the reason, I suppose from that, the, the reason I'm asking that is that because at, in the Dowron one, the uh, Commissioner actually said that um, elected members should have had oversight over credit card transactions and I was just wondering if we did um, have them in this or our warrant listings and if they weren't, um, why not? So that's the, the other question. If, if they get some special dispensation, um, is there a reason or a regulation um, which allows that? So if you could answer that, thank you. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor. That'll be taken on notice. Uh, we uh, will put the matter to the vote. Thank you, Councillors. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Councillor Sweeney. Yeah, just a quick uh, question, observation, I suppose, really. But uh, again, I just make one observation and perhaps a, a question too, if I can. Um, we again seem to be spending a lot of the ratepayers' money outside the city of Canning. Something I've raised before. Um, and just to give some context to it, you know, when you look through some of these listings, if we want a plumber, we seem to be going to Burswood. If we want an electrician, we seem to be going to Success. Even our groceries and milk in here, we seem to be going to Malaga. If we need a bobcat, we go to Hamilton Hill. Um, is it not something that we can make a concerted effort to have a look at supporting our local businesses and go through our warrant list and perhaps set ourselves a monthly target of say 60 or 70 per cent or something like that where we can support local businesses and with some of these items instead of uh, spending the ratepayers money outside the city of Canning I'm sure that we can reduce a lot of this spending um, or divert some of this spending back into the City of Canning. Is that something that we could look at um, for future warrant listings? Uh, Director Bow. Um, it is, Mr Mayor. However, um, administering the City's budget, uh, one of the prime objectives is to deliver value for money for the ratepayers of the City of Canning, and I'm not entirely sure that the two uh, proposals are immediately uh, able to be correlated. Um, we establish a number of panel contractors, uh, panel 
uh, suppliers for the provision of services and there is a significant evaluation process undertaken to ensure uh, value for money for the ratepayers. But I, I do understand that my colleague Dr McQuaid is working uh, through her business development team um, and maybe it would be worth a comment from her. Mr. Dr McQuaid. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, as per my response to this matter raised last week, um, the business development team and procurement team are working up on a plan on how we can both internally better work with staff on their awareness and the use of it under the policy, which does recommend a buy local first, and then also work with our businesses so that we understand exactly what's on offer in our city and also businesses understand how they can work with the city through our procurement processes. So that is something that we are actively working on um, and we'll be looking to roll out with business so shortly. So you raise a good point, Councillor Sweeney, and it's uh, under consideration right now, so the city's looking at it. Thank you. I look forward to seeing that in the future, so thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Just in relation to Councillor Sweeney's um, question there, um, and through you, Mr Mayor, to Dr McQuaid, so will that come in the form of a, a policy? Dr McQuaid. City uh, already has a procurement policy, and the policy does have a buy local. Um, sorry, component. component. Sorry, I was losing my words there. Already does have a buy local component. Um, it's how we better manage that internally. So the policy is there. So what we're developing up is the framework that guides that, and we I'll happily share um, that with council either via a SIB or via a memo. Um, and also the, pro the, the work that we're doing with the business community as well. Thank you. The question is that it, I, I presume then it wouldn't be, you know, I mean, if you're changing policy, I mean, um, no. no but I mean, if, you, if you're adding to the policy, I mean, apart from um, grammatical, I mean, if it's going to be an, an amendment of some, some description. It'll be reviewed. Will that, will that come back as an amendment to council? Well, there may not be a need. Uh, can, Director McQuaid. At the moment, um, the opinion is, is we don't need to change the policy. The policy is there. It's how we are operationalising and delivering that, hence why we are focusing on the framework for how city officers um, <coughs> utilise our procurement processes and also how we work with the business community. If there is a need to change the policy, then yes, of course, that would run through the normal process and come back before council. Well, I look forward to seeing the memo, how that will change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Uh, let's put the matter to the vote. Councillor? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I've got some questions and I've brought up this a number of times. A uh, fellow councillor who hasn't been here, who's not on council at the moment, has. Last time I brought up this about temporary staff, I was told that we were addressing this and that it would be decreasing dramatically. At the moment, in the warrant listings today, we're showing um, temporary staff expenditure of $189,902. I am horrified at that. Payments to one company, um, oh, 149,268. Another company, 1,500, 1,600, 16,000, 1,500. Total up of 189,000 when we were told we were going to be reducing this. We've reduced our staff levels as per the budget and the long-term financial plan, but we seem to be going back and spending this. Now, to bring this into um, context, so that you know, that my fellow councillors know, City of Stirling, 21 grand in their warrant listings. Less for the City of South Perth and less for the City of Armidale. City of Stirling is bigger than us by a long shot. Could you please explain to me now, again when we are going to go down or, or stop using as much temporary staff as we are using at the moment? That's, 189,000, you multiply that out by 12, that's, a, that's just a monthly figure, by the way. Uh, I might go, CEO, if you want me to refer this to you in the first instance, is some of that a timing issue? I, I agree with what Councillor Holland said, but is it a timing issue around invoicing and the such? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. It's probably both that and uh, I think the specialised nature, of, I suspect when we look at it, that most of that relates to Canning Lodge and the fact that during the process of COVID, with the restrictions that came upon us, uh, we've had to go out and source uh, labour for the specialist nature uh, for that provider. 
uh, Dr McQuaid may well have more context on it, but certainly the intention is not to try and uh, simply escalate what we spend on, um, on temporary labour. Can I just ask before Dr McQuaid jumps in though, considering the question has been asked and it's been asked before, can we perhaps get some detail to Council around um, you know, what exactly that 189000 is? I think it owes a an explanation. Councillor Holland's asked the question and I accept your answer but perhaps we need some uh, some detailed clarity on that rather than just um, uh, trying to guess at where it might have gone. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say guess, I know, I know we know where it went. Uh, Dr McQuaid. Yes, just with regard to Canning Lodge, um, we were on a, on a track to decrease our use of agency staff. Um, COVID, uh, unforeseen as it was, has caused major issues in that, not just for ourselves in this space, it's seeing across the aged care sector, it is very hard to find and to retain staff. As quickly as we are recruiting staff, we are losing staff. Um, the latest government mandate, federal government mandate that um, any aged care worker must have their first COVID vaccine by the 17th of September is again causing us issues. And given the 24 seven nature of the service, we have no choice but to rely on agency. Um, and we are con consciously trying to recruit, um, but yes, we will bring back a more detailed responses to how that I guess relates. Get some detail from uh, from the city for you on that expenditure. Yes, I'd appreciate that because I understand how COVID is hit. And I'm very well aware of this, but that this is 189,000 for this this month, not for a couple of months ago when COVID was really bad, or six months ago, eight months when it was shocking. This was just for a couple of okay. for last month. Yep, we'll get some detail for you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Uh, let's put the matter to the vote. Motion CC-037-21 has been carried unanimously. 11 in favour. Uh, thanks, councillors. We move to item 13.3 on tonight's agenda. Uh, the responsible officer being Doc, um, Mr Graham Bride, the Director of uh, Canning Development. It's CD 019 of 21. I don't doubt you could be a doctor if you wanted to be a doctor, uh, Mr Bride. Uh, the report uh, titled being Adoption of Scheme Amendment Number 2 to Local Planning Scheme Number 42. Uh, the officer's recommendation is on screen and also appears on page 64 of the agenda. Can I have a mover, please, from the floor? Mover, councillors. Councillor Kunza, thank you. A seconder. Councillor Barry, thank you. Councillor Kunza. Uh, this is just a step following previous um, decisions of Council and I support the officer recommendation. It is, thank you. Councillor Barry, anything to add? Ditto, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, in the absence of anyone wishing to speak against the matter, we might put it to the vote. Thank you. To the vote. Motion CD-019-21 has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Uh, thank you, Governance. Uh, we've already dealt with CD-020 of 21 on page 77 of tonight's agenda, so we'll move to CD-021 of 21, the review of the Dog Local Law 2021 by Joint Standing Committee on Delegated Legislation. The officer's recommendation is on screen and is also on page 100 of tonight's agenda. A mover, please. Councillor Holland, thank you. And a seconder is Councillor Barry. Councillor Holland. Yes, I support the officer's recommendation, but I don't have anything further to say. Thank you. Councillor Barry, anything to add? Nothing further to add, thank you. Thank you, councillors. If anyone wishes to speak against it, please raise your hand. If not, we will put it to the vote. Thank you. Let's put the matter to the vote. <laughs> Motion CD-020-21 has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Uh, thank you. The next item is item 13.4, uh, the responsible officer being uh, Mr Ashley McKinnon, the Acting Director of Canning Environment. It's EN 012 of uh, 21. 
It's request 15 oblique 2019 for a pre-qualified panel of suppliers for building construction and renewal work. The recommendation is on page 105 of the agenda and is on screen. Councillor Spencer Teo made an impartiality uh, declaration earlier in the meeting. Councillor Spencer Teo, for the sake of the record, I'll get you to read that to the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, GID Constructions were engaged by the City of Canning to renovate the Rossmine Kindy while I was president on the committee. I had daily contact uh, whilst yeah, during the project, uh, arranging the work, and subsequently engaged um, their services to perform additional work outside the contract. At completion, I gave them a glowing testimonial, um, and it's still active on their website today. Thank you, Councillor Spencer Teo. Can I have a mover for this item, please, Councillors? Uh, Deputy Mayor, thank you very much. And a seconder. Seconder for the item. Councillor Kunza, thank you. Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Councillor Kunza, have you got anything to add? No, I don't, Mr Mayor. Anyone wish to speak against the matter? We'll put the matter to the vote. Thank you, Councillors. Motion EN-012-21 has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Thank you. Uh, we move to EN-013 of 21, the office, uh, sorry, the report title being Shelley East Retrospective Undergrounding Project. The officer's recommendation is on screen. It also appears on page 119 of tonight's agenda. Can I have a mover, please, for that matter? That will be Councillor um, Kunza, thank you. And the seconder will be Councillor Spencer Teo. Councillor Kunza. Um, uh, Mr Mayor, I very uh, much speak in favour of this officer recommendation. It's a big moment for Shelley, many of whom have been waiting for underground power for 20 years since it was undergrounded in Rossmine. I mean, already going into Shelley West where the poles and wires have been removed, um, it already has tra transformed the character of the area and in a few years' time when the trees are growing unimpeded, um, there's more bird life, the suburbs are cooler, it will really transform um, that area and now the area, people in Shelley East will look forward to it too. Pleased to see costs have come down since we surveyed the local community last year, I mean $1,500 is, is a great uh, result um, and I would expect that if we surveyed the community again um, it would increase the, the support a bit more. Um, I've got to say reading it, it's a bit, again, I'm a bit bemused that at the start, the state government didn't allow us to do the whole Shelley at one project and it would brought the costs even further down and re remove the bureaucracy. But um, I mean, today I got an unsolicited call from Mark Sawyer, a, a resident in Shelley East, who wanted to come down to say how thrilled he was that this was happening because he's been one of those residents that have been um, arguing for this for 20 years. So he would have loved to have been here. But um, I hope council supports unanimously uh, and that um, the residents of Shelley East can look forward to it. Thank you, Councillor Kunza. Councillor Spencer Teo? I have nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against the matter? Councillors will put it to the uh, vote. Uh, Councillor Ponaturoi uh, not being in the room at the moment. We'll put the matter to the vote. Motion EN-013-21 has been carried 10 in favour. Uh, no one voting against, noting Councillor Ponathora is ab absent for the vote. Thank you. We move to item 13.5, the reports uh, of the Director Canning Community, Dr Sarah McQuaid. There are no reports from that Directorate this evening. We move then to item 14 on tonight's agenda, which are motions of which previous notice has been given. Uh, let me see. Uh, in accordance with clause 4.13 of the City of Canning Standing Orders, uh, Local Law 2015, Councillor Spencer Teo has submitted the following notice of motion. The responsible officer being Warren Bow, Director Warren Bow, the, uh, the Director of Corporate and Commercial. The recommendation is on page 129 of the agenda and it is on screen. Councillor Spencer Teo, of course, is the uh, mover. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Kunza, thank you. Councillor uh, Spencer T. I I'll invite you to speak to your motion, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> Firstly, it was um, disappointing to say the least that the last two funding applications from community groups to improve city assets were rejected for one reason or another. 
Um, however, having a policy which guides council and having Point a... Point of order, Mr Moose, excuse me, sorry. You cannot have adverse reflection on a that previous decision. Disappointing is. Most definitely it is. I didn't hear her say the word dis you disappointing. You did. Have a listen to the tape. I said it was disappointing. It, there were people in the community who were disappointed. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I uphold the. Uh, I'll just okay. ask you to withdraw that. I uh, withdraw it's that. It's not disappointing. It's not disappointing to us. It's a. It's a. It's a matter that was actually resolved by council as a totality. We all uh, uh, accept that decision at the time. So uh, yeah, I'll ask you to withdraw it. And you have. Thank you, Councillor Holland, for raising it. Go okay. ahead. So having a policy which guides council and having a clear application approval process for loan funding for our community groups in Canning will be of immense benefit not only to our bottom line but also to the look of our community facilities and the timing of their much needed upgrades. More importantly, this type of funding has the potential to improve the viability and longevity of some of our community groups and to future-proof them for years to come. State funding through grants often requires some kind of contribution from the community groups and rather than defer projects to seek additional funding which have the potential of eligibility criteria changing or time constraints, this means that clubs and groups can work out how much is required and on what terms they can comfortably repay the funds to the city. Like um, Williton Basketball Association and the Tennis Club, many grant funds are paid by reimbursement. Um, so if you've got a $500,000 loan but only $100 in the bank account, um, you've got to pay for those services and then the state government will reimburse you for payments made. Um, so to me this makes um, perfect sense in encouraging our community groups to actually apply for independent funding outside of the city. Um, I personally don't believe in long-term funding, um, but a policy that we all get to work on with um, and have all open conversations with, and hopefully um, you know, we can open our minds to support um, our local not-for-profit groups. This isn't asking to adopt a policy. This is simply asking for staff to draft one for our consideration. If you don't like it in a few months, you can choose not to support it, or we can work together to find some sort of common ground. I think we owe it to our community clubs and organisations to make an effort to be consistent and to be fair, and at least try to get a policy in place for applications that may come before us in the future. Therefore, in the best interest of all our community groups in the City of Canning, I ask my fellow councillors to please support this notice of motion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor Kunza. Um, yeah, I support this notice of motion. I do think we need a policy position on this. Uh, we need a basis point. We can't have situations where we tell one group, no, they can't have funding and another group, they can have funding. Um, we do need a philosophical uh, uh, position from council, not only to help the staff, give guidance to the staff, um, but also to guide the council, to give us guidance when we're making decisions. Um, as I've said a few times over the last few months, um, I believe this is a way that we can help the community see their projects realised. Um, I don't see why we would gift um, community groups money through a grant, ratepayers money through a grant, but not lend it when it's paid back. I mean, if we're helping a community group pay for their own infrastructure, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, there's no reasonable argument why you wouldn't loan a, a club money, but you would gift it money through a grant. So as long as we've got that policy framework in place and um, that can be helped desired by the staff and endorsed at some point by council. Um, but let's, it will help us make consistent decisions going forward. Thank you, Councillor Kunza. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Councillor Barry. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, look, I just think in reading this, I mean, it's a little bit um, scant on, on detail. Um, would it look like the Senate a little bit more meat on the bone, so to speak. Um, I, I can't quite understand where it says this, if the city cannot fund um, a loan to a club, then we could we could um, get a loan. Um, basically, I, I presume that was from um, WATC. So if we're talking about small loans, 100,000 here, 200,000 there, we end up with a, a plethora of uh, loans. But um, we still end up, uh, the rate payers, um, will be paying for that if there, if there is default now. Everybody can say, well, they won't default. But um, I was here when the, um, the Willetton Sports Club uh, basically wanted $250,000 and, and basically they defaulted. 
um, or we, we didn't lend them, but they, they had a substantial loan that was left over and they couldn't pay that. And I mean, if it's on a city asset, I mean, I presume that um, if you had a reasonable case with um, a reasonable bank account, you could go to the bank and get the money because if you, if you default to the city's loan, the risk is all taken by the city and the city is the rate payers. I don't think they need to be um, put in that position. I mean, I had a look in the, there was an article in the, um, the Canning Gazette and where there was um, some statements saying, you know, well, we're not a bank and we have an obligation um, to look after our money wisely. So from my perspective, at least if we've got CSO 1, that's basically the city, the city grants a third, uh, we ask the government to grant a third, and then the applicant usually has to pay the third. And if, if one fails, then it all fails. But that at least gives us, and they're usually over a two year cycle, so we do all our, our due diligence, etc. And like I say, we then have the opportunity to at least ask the, um, the state government to um, share the load as well. And in saying that, then our officers would look at it and um, say, well, yep, that's okay, we'll go ahead with that. But I mean, and I know I'm not saying it's um, let's have loans willy nilly, but uh, I just don't think it's right when we have CSO1 in place. So I speak against it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Sweeney. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I can understand where my colleagues um, that are putting this motion forward, um, where they're coming from, but uh, I think for me at this stage, I'm going to speak against it. And I, I speak against it on the basis that I think that, um, you know, really there are only a small handful of clubs that would be probably in realm of applying financially for a loan like this. Most clubs are, are battling to stay afloat these days. I think most clubs just rely on the, the one revenue stream which is um, their membership. So, you know, they are very restricted by even contemplating or coming to the council to get a loan because they just simply could not afford it. Um, and I do think that um, we, we should be looking at trying to declutter and streamline our processes. I think we're doing that. And I, I really don't think that a policy, um, the, the way that we're doing this at the moment, adds or is advantageous to anybody because at the end of the day, as the city has pointed out, which I read it somewhere, is that you know, even though we have this policy, um, it's really superfluous because each application is going to come before us and we're going to make a decision on each application anyway. So by having another policy, I just think that it adds an unnecessary layer of bureaucracy to um, what is already a quite a comprehensive process that's going to take place if any sporting club or any community club is in a position to be able to apply for a loan. Um, so for me, I think that it is superfluous and I think we should stick to judging each application on its merits when it comes before Council. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you. Councillors, I'll just say, look, I, I support it um, and only from the point of view, gee whiz, we uh, had a couple of instances recently where um, we really could have done with a little bit of guidance on exactly uh, how we should have uh, conducted, um, you know, the decision making in here. And I guess that's what good governance is. It's about having some really strict guidance around um, how we should act in certain scenarios. Uh, and I do take the point of Councillor Sweeney that probably are not huge numbers of um, community groups uh, that might come to us for assistance, but look, I could probably name a couple and uh, one of them uh, which has been talking to, uh, you know, a number of uh, us have been, even the Canning Vale Footy Club, uh, they've been talking about a um, uh, talking about a club room out there. We, you know, we can't fund it at the moment. They could probably service the loan, but how does a club get a loan? Because banks actually uh, loan money based on security, uh, so they need bricks and mortar. So how can a how can a community group go to a bank and get a loan to build a property uh, that really will be on our land? And it's just so complicated. I think at times um, I agree with the point of view of Councillor Sweeney as much as it should be taken on a case by case. Um, scenario, uh, and that should always be the case. 
um, the case by case basis, but still we do need some guidance. I think what I really like about this is it's not asking for us to uh, be given a policy, it's asking for consideration of a draft policy and that that will be workshop by all of us. And if we're not happy with it, uh, we can then discuss it, change it, amend it, or not actually, uh, uh, not actually resolve to accept it. But I think considering what's happened uh, just recently with what's happened here at, at Council, with the decisions we've been forced to take in regards to uh, support uh, for a number of community clubs, I really um, I would benefit personally from some greater guidance uh, on decision making around this. And I know a number of councils do have a similar policy and I'd like to think that at least we might progress this to a workshop so we can all just discuss it, see where we want to take it. But to not do that I think would be perhaps a disservice to our uh, community because that we're in the business of supporting our community. Uh, that's why we're here. So I'd like to think that we might support this tonight and uh, proceed to a workshop at some later stage. Uh, that's all I'll say on the matter. Does anyone else wish to speak either for or against it before we move on? Councillor Ponitura, of course. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, with respect, everyone, um, I probably will have to speak against this because um, uh, with all the respect decisions we made in the council, I was, I was, of course, I feel I don't need a policy because I was very clear and I made a very ethical decision on the matter. And as Councillor Sweeney said, yes, um, uh, it's totally different from club to association, how they function and, and how we bring the data and facts and figures and present. And I'm sure um, the staff, uh, the management, they do a lot of work. Right now, um, I would rather be saying uh, putting a loan um, a funding policy, we should be actually looking at a loan borrowing policy. There are loan borrowing policies from WTC, which other councils have got it. That is most important, and that should come from the management and us together. Um, and on another note, um, I would rather staff spending more of the time trying to get us the financial reporting something which we wanted, which I, I don't want to be wasting staff time because we've got a finance fund system. But that is most important because we are in an operational deficit situation that we are holding accountable, not just putting a notice of motion for the sake of that some decision. I'm again, with respect, I'm saying maybe that's right or wrong, those decisions, because of that we don't bring another policy and tell staff to go and work on it. Because we need to um, make, um, I totally agree with Councillor Sweeney's point, and I'd rather that staff's time put in to reporting to us um, something which we need to be accountable for our financial management. So thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak either for or against it before we move it to the... Yes, Councillor Bain. A question, please, Mr Mayor. Uh, is the CEO aware of any other councils that have a similar policy? Thank you. CEO. <clears throat> uh, no. Director Bow. No, Mr Mayor. I can provide some information to any of the elected members Could you? as required. Yep, thank you. We'll take the notice on, on notice. Anyone else, councillors, before I go back to Councillor uh, Spencer Teo to rebut? Councillor Spencer Teo, can I ask you to close debate and uh, just rebut what has actually been said? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll go backwards if that's okay. Um, in respect to wasting staff's time, um, I find that quite an interesting comment considering staff support this. Um, why would they support it if they believed that it was a waste of their time and resources? Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, with um, applying for loans, um, community groups cannot apply for loans with banks. Um, on an asset that does not belong to them. It, it, it's not possible, it doesn't happen. Um, so community clubs have no option but to go to the landlord or the asset holder um, for support. We have a small amount um, of money in grants to give away every year and it usually works out that one community group benefits from our large um, grant funding amount, uh, amounts per year. This will take the burden off that and this will open that up for more than one community group to benefit from that. Um, Councillor Sweeney mentioned that um, that it's going to restrict a lot of clubs. Um, if, even if a club needed a loan of $10,000, um, we're not talking about millions of dollars here. You know, if a, if a club needed $10,000 just to upgrade something, they know that in two years um, they can fundraise $5,000 a year. Why would we not 
why would we not support that? Why would we say, oh, no, just because one club got 200 grand, your 10 grand um, doesn't really count? Um, again, this is not asking for us to adopt a policy. This is uh, asking for us to frame um, a policy. I, Councillor Barry mentioned um, the Williton Sporting Complex. Well, what I found really interesting with the last two applications is that we weren't given the club's financials. We weren't told that the clubs, or we weren't to even told if the clubs were able to service the loans. Um, I had to ask um, for financials to make a decision as to whether I thought the clubs were capable of paying that. Now, I wasn't around back in Williton uh, Sporting Complex days, um, but perhaps if we had a policy then that um, made sure that uh, financials of these community groups are provided to prove that they can service the loan. Who knows? Maybe it, the situation may not have ended that way. Um, but anyway, so again, this is um, supported by staff. They don't believe it's a waste of time. Um, it'd be really disappointing for those clubs who have run out of options um, if we close that door on them now. Um, so again, all I'm asking for is a draft policy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Let's just put this matter to the vote. Thank you. Motion NOM-006-21 has been lost. Four in favour, seven against. Uh, councillors voting against. Uh, councillors Barry, Holland, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Ponathori, Porter, Sabiri and Sweeney. Uh, thank you, uh, councillors. Uh, we move to urgent business at item, item 15. Uh, urgent business, there is none. Uh, confidential matters, uh, we have one item there. I can I have a move and a seconder that we actually deal with the matter behind closed doors. Deputy Mayor, thank you. Councillor Bain as a seconder. Uh, we'll put that matter to the vote. Uh, the motion to close doors for confidential has been carried unanimously, 11 in favour. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I ask the public gallery please uh, to clear? Thank you for your attendance. Okay, the meeting uh, is now reopened. I'm going to read that decision of council uh, for the record. Thank you, Karen. Uh, and governance, I'm going to need you to place it up on screen for me and I'll read it off screen. Not that I'm confused at all, but... Uh, delete point three. Oh, we need to delete... Uh, yep. Can I get you to clean that up for me, please, Stacey? This is what was moved. This is what was moved. The original motion was lost. The officer's recommendation and the alternative recommendation. Okay. Uh, for the record, um, uh, in relation to uh, item CC03821, uh, the title of that report having been uh, Expression of Interest, portion of 37 Burrandar Boulevard in Williton, in brackets, lot 102. It was moved Councillor Holland and seconded uh, Deputy Mayor Jesse Jacobs uh, that Council resolves not to proceed with an expression of interest for a community use on portion of 37 Barrandar Boulevard, uh, Williton. Further, that it resolves that no further negotiations or discussions continue with Chungwa Association or any third party in relation to the disposal of portion of 37 Barrandar Boulevard, Williton. And finally, request the CEO to continue discussions with the Chungwa Association regarding other potential appropriate sites within the city of Canning. Do you want me to read out the vote on that one?
Uh, the item was carried to 10 1 uh, with the Mayor voting against it. Uh, part three of the vote uh, reads. No, it's, it's lost. Thank you. For the uh, sake of the meeting, then, uh, that, that was the resolution of Council in relation to that item. At item 17, uh, closure, uh, there being no further business, I now declare the meeting closed, and the time now is 9.17pm. Uh, 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 I'd like to thank uh, everybody for attendance. Thank you, Councillor, and thank you, staff. Yeah.